then I gotta say, here with my poor technical skills here. Okay, there. Oh, look at that. Except I've already messed up. Oh, do you need me to it. send it to you again? Nope, it's not that. I can't seem to share what I had, what was supposed to be. <laughs> let me see. Oh, darn it. Wait, let me see here. Oh, I am going to apologize. I just need to open really quickly, and then I think I can do it this way. Bear with me, and then Alt-Tab. Son of a gun, it doesn't wanna. So you're, what you're gonna have to see is just my. Oh, there you my, go. Yeah, and I'm sorry, cause now you just see the weirdness of it. Cause I had it nice and pretty and I practiced, but um, <laughs> apparently I'm not very good at this. So, <laughs> um, so I'll just start and say, I, you know, I don't know how, how, how many people know are coming into this knowing about lymphedema, have questions about lymphedema. I don't want to bore people who have, who know all the, the basics of it, but um, at any time, you know, ask questions or um, tell me this is boring, move on, please. <laughs> okay, because you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have, have this background. Um, and actually, how many people have dealt with lymphedema or, or have currently have questions? If I can see everybody, I can't. I can't see if I can see. And again, also okay. So a lot of people. <laughs> um, and again, I want to apologize because I'm really a buffoon with um, Zoom <laughs> and, and technology. So I'll start and just say my my personal experience. Um, I have I've been working with. Um, lymphedema since 2015 I went and, and was trained um, and now my outpatient experience is really mostly breast cancer rehab and lymphedema treatment for upper upper extremity so mostly breast cancer related lymphedema um, I work up at Sandoval Regional Medical Center and um, mostly I have patients come through UNM there are also great therapists at Loveless and Presbyterian and private therapists in Albuquerque so there are a lot of therapists who are um, out there to help with whatever needs people have. Um, does do does is it helpful for me to kind of go through the background information of lymphedema? Is that would people find that helpful? Kind of what causes it and all of that. Yes, please. Okay. All right. Yeah. So yeah, I think right. so. Yeah. So I, I do have these these slides, and again, we can blow through them. We can look at them all. Whatever I was trying to mostly organize myself <laughs> and have things for you to look at. But um, lymphedema is this kind of protein-rich fluid that, uh, or lymph fluid is protein-rich fluid. When lymphedema is when the fluid is collected kind of in an abnormal way in your in your limbs, say um, your arms, your sometimes head and neck, sometimes your legs. Mostly it's extremities, but not always. People will have lymphedema in their breast after uh, breast surgery, their trunk. Often I'll have people come in and say, um, I feel like my pants are too tight or I, I've gained weight, but just in my belly. And sometimes it's just an, a collection of lymph fluid in the belly because it's not draining appropriately or effectively. And what happens is when you have either lymph node removal or um, radiation or any kind of breast surgery, the lymph nodes, which are part of the a very important part of your body, but help to kind of push that fluid through your body. If they're removed or damaged, the fluid that travels through your body throughout the day has um, a, 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 like a roadblock in its path. So think about like I-40, I-25, there's construction there at the, at the ramp. Um, what happens when there's construction and it's rush hour the road backs up. And so sometimes that will happen with this fluid in your body. It just kind of backs up into your arm or into your breast or into your trunk. And the body, which should should be able to reroute it on, say, a frontage road or a detour, doesn't always know how to do that. It's sometimes not able to for whatever reason. Either it's your genetic makeup or it's the, the extent of the damage to the system or whatever it is 
personally to you, sometimes it is not able to move. And so then you need treatment for it. Which is, um, there's a specific massage, manual lymph drainage, um, and um, com compression garments, exercise, all of these things that help to manage your lymphedema. Sorry, I'm, I'm fumbling here because now my slides are, <laughs> are, are out of my, my view here. So what does lymphedema feel like? You know, it can feel like tightness. It can feel like heaviness in your arm, heaviness in your breast, thickness in your chest. Sometimes people say it feels like pins and needles. And sometimes that's because there's this swelling that's putting pressure on your nerves. And so then you've got that, you know, kind of like you've sat on your foot and your foot is asleep. It's that kind of feeling. Sometimes people who have it in their axilla or their breast will tell me, it feels like there's a pillow between my arm and my, my trunk. Like I can't close my arm all the way. Um, a lot of times people will have tenderness in the elbow because you've got all these nerves that run through there. And if you've got swelling here, it's pushing on the, on the elbow and on those nerves and causes pain. Um, sometimes your clothing fits more tightly on one side or your jewelry, your watch, rings, things like that. Um, and then there's these different stages. So we'll just go through them really quickly. Stage zero is this latency stage. It's kind of brewing, but you don't necessarily see it or measure it. And so I'll have people come in and they'll say, I feel like my arms is heavy. But, you know, we do measurements and the measurements are, are the same on both sides. There's no visible pitting edema. There's no visible swelling. But that that feeling, I go by people's feelings. I, you know, you know your bodies. And if your your body is feeling kind of different, they're heavy, thick, numb. Um, it's possible that that could be that beginning stage of lymphedema where it's great to be able to manage it at that point and start on a path of doing self-massage, doing some increased exercise, things like that. Stage one is kind of reversible. So you can start to, by the end of the day, you start to feel heaviness and swelling. You go to sleep, you elevate your arm, you wake up the next morning, it's no longer there. Um, your arm, this feels like it's back to its normal size. But again, by the end of the day, it starts to feel heavy again. You've been working, you've been using your arm. Um, it's swollen a little bit. You elevate it, you go to sleep, and the next morning it feels a little bit better. Stage two, um, it's called spontaneously irreversible. And in this stage, it doesn't get better overnight, right? It doesn't get better on its own. It really needs some management. So mostly massage and um, special compression garments and, and exercise. And then the last stage, this lymphostatic elephantiasis um, is pretty rare with breast cancer. I think I may have seen one person in the years that I've been doing this with with that stage, but it's pretty rare with breast cancer. It's unfortunately not as rare with legs, but with breast cancer, it's pretty rare. Um, and then I'm just gonna stop in a second here, just to let you know, so possible causes, right? This is the lymph node removal, radiation, infection after your breast surgery or seroma, multiple surgeries, um, things like that. It can be the cause of that secondary lymphedema after breast cancer treatment. So I'm going to just stop talking for a second and see if people have questions. And I, yeah, let me just see if I can see the chat. I think there was a chat and I don't know how to access it here. <laughs> Anybody have questions? Antonette did. I, I, I think, Mary, that you'll get to this, but one question and just tell me um, we, if you need, if you can address this later is the, the, the biggest thing that I don't understand about uh, the lymphoderma is that, is that, and that, I guess that's it. I guess it's ju it just starts off and you don't realize it. And then, you know, six months later you have it. So there's no real, or, or how long, you know, can you get it three years later or how does that, how does that <clears throat> work? Yeah, that's a really good question. So the, so the, the one thing I, I'm going to give you guys later an, a, a link to a video that I find is really helpful to watch as a woman who explains lymphedema and in a very concrete way and much more organized and <laughs> composed than I have been. But another thing she says, she points out is that we as women 
tend to be caregivers. We tend to be multitasking throughout our lives. And so we go through all this treatment, right? And then we go through our daily routines because we're not really able to stop everything we're doing. And then we're like, huh, my arm feels all funny. And, but we pass it off, right? And then, well, it still feels a little funny and then we pass it off. And so we tend to put things off. And so this is a time to really, really be in tune to your body and, and allow yourself time for some self-care and, and to pay attention to what's going on because it, it can kind of insidiously creep up on you. It also can happen years after your treatment. So I always use my mother-in-law as a, an example because she had breast cancer. She had a lumpectomy and radiation in 2000. And two years ago, she um, took a flight back east and she'd been flying back and forth and doing all kinds of things. And she came back and she's like, huh, my arm's really heavy and swollen. And her, she had swelling through her trunk and her arm and up into her neck. And um, it just kind of, reared its ugly little head. We worked on it and she's she's pretty well managed now again. She, when I think back, you know, she had had a shot and this was years before I started working with lymphedema. She had had a shot on that left side. Her arm swelled up. They had to cut off her wedding ring. She did some exercise and then it went away. So it just was a, like a here and there and here and there, right? So it can show up anytime after your treatment and it might not ever but right. sometimes it does. So, yeah. So, so there's no real way other than to like, you know, be vigilant about some of the warning signs. That, okay. Great. Yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the good news, bad news. I mean, you'll, you, you would know. So some of the signs you'll, you'll, I'll, I, there's a slide in here that you'll see, like, again, that like suddenly your, your clothing is a little tighter. And that, that might be a sign that maybe you should take a peek at what's going on. That, that those different, oh no, that was the slide we already did. The little, the feeling of the pillow, the heaviness. Be aware, but I know, uh, was it Susan, you had the question, what happens if it goes untreated? And so, you know, it's not an emergency. It, when you first start to feel lymphedema or if you miss those beginning signs, it's not an emergency. It's easier to treat and manage if you catch it early, but it's not an emergency. What happens though is if it becomes very, very swollen, then you're more at risk for cellulitis infections. You're more at risk for, um, you know, there's joint pain that goes with having a heavy arm. So I have a lot of people tell me their shoulder hurts because they're holding up this very heavy arm. So that can cause functional deficits for you, pain, dysfunction, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want anyone to think, oh, gosh, if I miss the signs, I'm really, I'm really up a creek because it's, it's, it's okay. It's great. It's easier to manage if you catch it early on, but it's manageable at any stage. We can work on it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Did I answer those questions or did I just cause more fear? Yes. No, okay. you did. Okay. <laughs> I know. And I don't Thank want, I, I, I was do reviewing a breast cancer rehab class this weekend. And <clears throat> one of the things that she talked about was this, you know, do you tell people all of the possible possible things that could cause lymphedema do you, all the possible flare up things because there's this fear of like I, I don't want people to go go through fear of i can't do this i can't do this i can't do this i can't do this because you really need to live your life and then i also don't want people to say shoot i caused this because you if you develop lymphedema it's nothing you did and i want people to take that away for, uh, most of all you're going to see all these warnings throughout, you know, at the doctor's offices and here's here and there, you know, don't do blood pressure on that side. Don't do um, the needle sticks. And, and yeah, it's, a, it's advised not to. But if by mistake you get a, a blood pressure drawn on that affected side, don't say, oh, my gosh, I've just caused a problem because I don't want anyone to ever think that if they develop it, it's something they've done. It's, if it's going to happen, it's probably going to happen in so don't ever blame yourself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Antoinette, you have a hand raised. I was actually going to be my question was, that's what I've always been told because I had the lymph nodes removed from the left side. So I have like a little medic alert thing, like don't mm -hmm. do blood draws, don't do blood pressure. Yep. But I mean, it's not the worst thing if that happens or- No, it's, it's advised not to for sure. Okay. But there's no, um, I'm going to go through as a slide that shows all the evidence-based risks. And then there's one that has these like anecdotal, right? And the blood pressure and the needle 
stick are anecdotal. So there's, there's no good hard evidence that that's gonna cause a problem. Now that said, I also tell people when, they, when I see them, I was given a research study um, by a colleague that it said, basically it debunked the whole, like don't do blood pressure and needle six on that side. It said, oh, you're fine, there's no evidence. But within a short period of time of my reading that, I had a patient come in who said I didn't have any problem and I, I had a flu shot or I, I, I could, she had blood drawn or whatever it was. And she said, and my arm is really swollen now. So I would still hold to, if you can avoid it, avoid it. But sometimes you're not gonna be able to avoid it and don't, don't get scared if they happen to do that side. You know, if you forget, if you, um, you know, if you have bilateral involvement, you have, you know, no good arm to do it on. So you might have to use a, an arm. So don't, I don't want people to think that's a, a never, never, never. And I'm, I'm in trouble if it happens because it, it, it's advised not to, but it's okay if it happens, just. Gotcha, that makes sense. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna pull up another screen here so so the the risk factors that you guys have probably heard about right like so a large amount of lymph nodes removed that's a that's a higher risk factor blood pressure needle sticks right flying and going or changing altitude i have had patients come in who who traveled into the mountains and they say gosh my arm got kind of heavy so that is a a, a possibility and then the other one is high bmi and that one that's the one that i really hate to talk about because um gosh as we as women how many people really like to talk about body weight right nobody <laughs> i don't think there's anyone out here who likes to talk about weight and um and bmi is a, a rough measure anyway i don't really like bmi as a measure of of um a person's body mass i don't but it is one of the ones that's actually proven if you have a bmi over 25 you it's clinically proven that you are more at risk for lymphedema. That said, it's not a, it doesn't mean you will have it. It's just, it is a, a bigger risk factor. So I, I, I touch that one with kid gloves because I don't like to, I don't like to talk about my weight. Nobody wants to talk about their weight. So, um, but I do have to tell people about it because it's, it's, it's up there as a risk. Um, and these are the ones that I was saying are evidence-based, right? So an axillary lymph node dissection. So when you take, you scoop out those nodes more than just the sentinel lymph node removal. Um, that's that is an evidence-based risk factor. So five five or more nodes, um, radiation to the regional node area there. That's a higher risk factor. An infection after your surgery, that's proven. A traumatic injury. So if you fall on that side, you get hit on that side. That's going to increase your risk. This is a biggie here, shoulder range of motion past 90. So I ask people to, to limit to here for two to three weeks after surgery. If I, if, I, if I have the luxury of seeing them before surgery, I would ask them to do that. Um, and I think a lot of the surgeons do too, just keep it to about 90 degrees. Um, and that's based on a study from one of the classes I did, a study on dogs that they, they, they removed lymph nodes and then they had them limit their move the dogs limit their movement to 90 degrees for a week and within a week the, the neurons the nerve started to regenerate or the lymph pathways started to regenerate so the theory being you know we're, we're humans we take longer to heal than dogs do so let's give it a couple of weeks and hopefully those pathways may rebuild themselves so go around where the lymph nodes were removed or and and grow if that makes sense um and then exercise too soon after lymph node removal so Give yourself some grace. Walking, gentle walks right after surgery is, is great. Daily tasks is great, but don't rush back to the gym for, for you know a few weeks until your surgeon gives you clearance for that. I see there's a question here. Okay, so that's a really good question. Are you at risk with more with less than five nodes removed? So, yep. In theory, it's less risk. So what I've been reading more and more and the more and the more of the classes I've been doing, they're talking about how it used to be this blanket like more lymph nodes, you're higher risk, less lymph nodes, you're lower risk. But there, there's more and more evidence that points to it being um, genetically based. So you, your body, you know, we all have different number of lymph nodes in our body. Um, so that's like the one thing that we're all different at, right? We all have the same, for the most part, bones and muscles and, and fingers and toes and eyes and, um, but we have different numbers of lymph nodes. So um, 
our bodies have different capacity to move lymph fluid. And so you could, it's possible before your surgery that your body is already carrying a large lymph fluid and really potentially struggling with it anyway. And then the, the surgery could be a trigger that causes that backflow and causes a problem. So um, whether you have one or 25 lymph nodes removed, it's not a sure thing that you're not going to get lymphedema with just one. And it's not a sure thing that you will with 25. So how's that for a committal, right? <laughs> Very non-committal on a lot of this stuff. And it, it's really hard. A lot of it is chance. And that's um, chance and, and genetics. Here we go. So, and that's why I put discussion there. Because I think that's really important to remember. We don't know what we're going in with. We also don't know if our, if our, you know, if our, we don't know what our family history is. We don't know what our genetic makeup is. We don't know what our lymph load capacity is already in our body. So we go into surgery and we just kind of hope that our body is able to, to take that on. And I say all that kind of, it sounds like defeatist and fatalist, but I actually mean it to be like, please don't, I, again, I have to come back to this. Don't ever think that if you develop lymphedema, it's something you've done. That's what I really want to hone, hone, hone in on here because you just got to, you know, be cautious, do the best, live your life, enjoy your life and do things with a degree of caution, but without panic. I see another question there. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. So this question, um, I had bilateral lumpectomies with lymph nodes removed on the right side and I was referred to PT and she recommended a flexi touch from tactile. So I recommend that a lot um, because it helps people self-manage. So, it, you know, coming, going to therapy sessions, however many times a week, the drive, missed work, all of that, it's very hard to manage lymphedema um, if you're having to travel and travel, travel, travel. So when people have lymphedema that they're going to have to manage for their life. I really try to get that flexi touch on board with them. There are lots of different compression pumps. The flexi touch is the only one that I know of at this point that has the, the, the trunk piece. It goes across the chest. It goes on the arm. It goes on the, there's like a pair of shorts that goes on your waist. Um, so it does this full drainage, much like we would do manual lymph drainage in the clinic. So yeah, I, I recommend that as much as I can. Um, I've had to fight insurance companies. Um, to, to try to, to to document thoroughly to show that it's needed because it really is a helpful thing. Annie. So on this list, I see climate and sleep and that's overnight is in the morning is the worst time for me. My, where I had the mastectomy, I, I can't move for like the first five minutes. So I tried using the compression sleeve, but I noticed that I was more swollen with it. Is there a reason I would be more swollen with it? What sleeve were you, are you wearing? It? You were wearing it at night? Yeah, I was wearing it overnight thinking that might help me in the morning. Mm -hmm. But then when I woke, I looked like a can of busted biscuits. I mean, <laughs> my hand was so oh, swollen. And mm -hmm. when I didn't wear it, I wasn't that swollen. So I didn't understand if I was doing it wrong or maybe I shouldn't have slept with it or... Should I massage before I put it on? Kind of all of the above. It was it the daytime sleeve that you were sleeping with, or is it a special nighttime sleeve? No, I, I think it was daytime. The daytime sleeve. Yeah. So, and and I was reminded of this recently because I was talking about sleeves on the plane, and I was reminded that you know those those daytime sleeves are really meant to be worn with activity. So throughout your day, you're moving oh. your arm, and so if you're sedentary. It can, it's not, there's no muscle action pumping. Got so there's it. a nighttime sleeve and let's, you know, we've got, there, you can get a nighttime sleeve that's designed for that specifically. The oh, other thing yeah. is if you wear a sleeve without a glove um, or a gauntlet, I don't know, did you have the glove or gauntlet on at night? No. Just, okay. No, just so leave it, down. it can push that fluid to the hand and then you little, end up with a little marshmallow. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Sorry. Um, you live and you learn. Yeah. Well, yeah, I feel like I'm learning every day. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I feel bad for, you know, I, I think of all the stuff that I missed years ago and all the stuff I keep missing. And I'm like, I just gotta, gotta keep, keep learning. If I could go back and contact all the people that I've, that I missed things on, I'm like, Hey, wait, let's try this. <laughs> so, 
Got it. A lot, okay. There's a lot. It's a, and, and it's, there's ongoing research too. They just keep learning new things about this. You can so. turn that on, babe, if you want. Okay. And this, 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 oops, that one, the other, like the climate, the whoopsie, those ones, that all of those are kind of possible, right? They're just, they're not, these are not um, clinically evidence based. They're just possible. You know, uh, I will say the sedentary lifestyle, that is, that is a big factor that contributes because you, you need muscle action to move your lymph fluid. We don't have, you know, our heart pumps our, our blood but we don't have a big organ to pump our lymphatic fluid. It's every individual muscle. So every muscle contraction pumps fluid in your, in your body. So movement is key. Yeah. I did notice that overnight it it's when I wake up in the morning, it's the worst. And now that it's getting colder, it seems like it's even worse. Like the cold is just, it's not good for it at all. And it's so interesting because for some people, the heat is worse. And so that's where, you know, it's, we're also individual because the heat can cause your body to just swell anyway. So everyone's so different. I mean, wow. and I would say, can, you know, try to increase, you know, muscle movements however you can during the day, uh, during the day before bed, and then, you know, do a, a little self massage before bed. Okay. And then look at getting, you know, look at getting into uh, getting a uh, nighttime. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. And I know that trying to keep bundled up from the cold doesn't help when you're having hot flashes. So right. I can't, I can't stay covered up because then the, I, in the middle of the night, everything's coming off because of the hot flashes. So, um, you know, yeah, there, the, okay. there's a new, there's a new nighttime garment um, by Medi that's made with this. They, 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 I haven't tried it. I have, I just have a little sample of it. It feels cool, but it's, it, they tout it being like, cool, I'm a cool kind of thing. This, this fabric that stays cool and it's specifically made because people going through this are having hot flashes because of the treatment. And so, and who wants to put on a, a big oven mitt at night when you're having a hot flash? So this one has special material to keep you cool. Somebody got me some, um, pant, some, um, menopause panties. And I was oh. tempted to wrap it around my arm to see. Oh, oh, oh I love it. <laughs> um, you know, just to see if it would help. Because they're supposed they're they're called many panties or something like that. And they're just they're for menopause. So you when you sweat, you're not like, you know, like excuse my language, you're not like swamp ass. So I thought, <laughs> I wonder if I put it on my arm. That's awesome. Huh. I don't know. I'm willing to try anything. Right? Uh, yeah. That's, and have you tried peppermint oil? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it lavender, helps a little that bit. Does help. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a, the answer, but it helps, right? Yeah. No, it, it that does help. It does help. Um, and then the question that, who is it that asked about the pump who has it? And it, I think you asked, will it help? And I do believe it will help. <laughs> I can't remember now who it was that said they had the pump. The pump. Is it Julie? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would try it. Did you get trained on using it? Oh, let me see. There we go. Sorry. Oh, that's yes. good. Yeah. Okay, good. So you had a trainer come to the just, house. And, all, and you don't, all I do is turn it on and off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You could slip it on and reset and everything. Yeah. Right? It's, it's helpful. Okay. Yes. Right. And if you have problems, I will say tactile is really good about um, getting back in touch with you. So if you, if you, if it's not working, call the, the number on there and they'll send another trainer out or they'll call you and FaceTime you or something like that. So for prophylaxis, because I don't have a lot now, but like you said, it can happen anytime. So it's good to use this prophylactically. Well, and that, that I would, I would, I'm hesitant to say yes, for sure. So I would say, feel, see how your body's feeling. If you start to feel that heaviness, yes, I would use it and maybe use it for a few days. And however, however your therapist had suggested to wear it, because I don't know typically in your case, but um, I do feel like, I mean, it's a big time commitment too. It's an hour, right? If you use the whole, yeah. the whole thing, it's an hour. Who has an hour? An hour. Most yes. people don't it's have an hour. An hour. <laughs> so if you start to feel that heaviness, yeah, slap it on. What I do tell people is if you go and open up these pathways right above your collarbone, because the pump doesn't, it goes across here. It doesn't get here. So I would do a little bit of opening here and here on, um, and we can okay. go over kind of that self massage later too. Okay. Um, all right. Thank so, you. Yeah, sure. And then I just have on this slide, just 
uh, the, right here, be kind to yourself because I, I, I feel like I can't say enough. Like if you develop lymphedema, please be kind to yourself and don't ever think it's something you've done because really it's, we're kind of at the mercy of what our body's gonna do. So yes, please be cautious. Yes, please be active. Um, yes, you know, try to avoid the potential triggers, but just self-care is really so, so important right now. Oh, panties. Oh, the oh, yeah, the <laughs> that's what they're called. That's cool. I have to look at this. All right. And now let's see here. So prevention. So I'll just got to quickly go through this one. This there's that 90 degrees. Right? So if, I mean, if anyone's looking at an upcoming surgery, really limit that movement to 90 degrees for two to three weeks, but and delay exercise at least a week if you can follow really for all of your surgeon and your oncologist and your nurse navigators all of their their directions on that um this one avoid reaching forward and that's a biggie um because that can stretch the area that can even cause some issues there again prevent those pathways so reaching into the back of the fridge reaching into the laundry so you know find someone to do your laundry for you <laughs> find someone at home to help out with all that stuff because because avoid that and you could you know you can say you can't do that for a year i feel like that's fair so, um, 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 and then I want to just go here to weight training and exercise and healthy weight. So another, there's a program called Strength After Breast Cancer, um, and they did a big nationwide study on strength training when you're at risk for lymphedema, you have lymphedema, or you don't have it yet or at all, but, you know, what are the benefits and what are the risks? And they basically said it's really, a, it's helpful, it prevents as long as you're doing it very carefully. And there's a, there's a specific kind of program that has a warm up, stretching, core exercises, upper and lower body weight exercises, and then a cool down. But they really focus on starting with a low weight, like start with soup cans or one to two pound weights, and you can progress to a hundred pounds if you want, but you're gonna go very, very, very slowly to get that strength. So you're, it's not a shock to your body system. And then it's only two to three times a week that you really need to do weight training. The rest of the week really you should be walking, moving, getting active as, as much as possible. Um, so, and benefits of exercise, okay, right? And improved quality of life, reduced risk of cancer recurrence. And that's, there's um, evidence for that. Reduce risk of death from cancer. I hate having to put that in there. Reduce fatigue um, and reduce risk for lymphedema. And the fatigue is big because you get so tired with all of this, this treatment, but actually exercise can increase your energy. Even when you're feeling incredibly wiped out, exercise, if you can get yourself up to even take a walk around the, the block can increase that energy. Um, and so in the ways of, you know, exercise, you know, find something you enjoy, Zumba, water aerobics, white walking, biking, I want anything like that. Walking with poles is a biggie. And I have a slide on that because I, I'm in love with these urban poles. Um, and someone told me the other day about this Leslie Sandstone walk away the pound so you can walk at home. So as we're going into windy and cold season, she's got YouTube videos apparently, and you can walk in your house and burn some calories and get everything moving. Um, but always monitor your side that's involved just to make sure you're not seeing any changes, um, any increase in size, pain, heaviness, any of that. Um, let's just on exercise and then, you know, 150 minutes a week. If you can do 150 minutes a week over the whole time, so 30 minutes a day for five days, 25 minutes a day, I, I can't do the math, but <laughs> basically, you know, a total of 150 minutes of increased heart week throughout right throughout the week your um overall health is improved and it also cuts the risk of recurrence and um helps with lymphedema prevention and here just really quickly as a picture of those urban poles because they if you'll see here are awesome because for lymphedema for you need kind of core con contraction to help your lymph flow faster and if you're walking with poles, every time you push down a pole, your core contracts. So in a mile, you can co contract your core 1,800 times. <laughs> There's 900 shoulder range of, range of motion movements for each side. I mean, it's, it's really pretty um, awesome for overall health exercise. It uses more muscles, burns more calories, and it's pumping your arms, which you want for if you have lymphedema or to prevent it. Um, 
Oh yeah. Okay. YouTube two channel, informative, uh, lymphedema, self care, dry brushing was one of my favorite preventive therapies. Cancer. Yeah. I like the cancer rehab PT. I, I, I have some of her links on the page that I give to people. Cause I, I think she's got some really great videos and she, her, 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 the way she does massage is pretty much the way that I do. Um, so I really like to kind of throw her videos in there with for people to to follow at home. And you can use a a brush. So I, I haven't done specifically brushing, but I do tell people in order to get like their back area a long handled shower brush because it really just needs to stretch the skin to move that. Lip. So that's a great. She's a good one. Cancer Rehab PT. She's a good one. Um, and then just last slide here. You know, if you have lymphedema, treatment would involve so complete digestive therapy, which in, includes skin care. You need to do that kind of infection prevention, manual lymph drainage, use the compression garments and exercise. And the garments can be either, you know, over the counter based on your need or custom made. Um, they can be sleeves, gauntlets, gloves, a bra, a cami, a vest, and it really depends on what your needs are. A lot of people have breast swelling, but no trunk swelling, or they have just swelling from armpit down to, to groin, depending on what the surgeries were. So they make a nice zip zip up vest that can really compress. They make a compression bra that zips up that just compresses this area. So it really depends on what your personal needs are. And then I just, if, this one has some links here. And so I think these, if anyone wants to kind of take a picture of that slide, this these three links down here, well, the National Lymphedema Network has a ton, or not, yeah, has a ton of position statements, um, information. It's a great resource. This woman here, this naturopathic provider, um, I, yeah, no, her name is totally eluding me. She's got a website. She has videos on doing a trampoline to make, get your lymph flowing faster. She has a, um, a whole list of foods to avoid, foods to add in. Now there's, there's not a ton of it's hard to find research that's going to say food will affect your lymph. Um, but I feel like if it's good, healthy food and it's not going to hurt you, then it's worth a try. Um, and then this close training on oh, education session, that one right there is the, the videos I talked about with um, that. It's two little 30 minute videos. And this woman, it's Dr. Schmidt, she talks about lymphedema, why it happens, in very nice, easy to understand terms and kind of how exercise is helpful. And then the last one is a self manual lymph drainage video. That one used to be sold. And during COVID, Compression Guru made it free to, to stream. And so I was very, very excited. Um, as it's a 30 minute video, which will walk you through every single step of doing self manual lymph drainage very slow, careful, methodical, very nicely explained. So anyone who wants to do or needs to do that self-massage, she's a great person to to link into and follow. Or that cancer rehab PT, that's, I didn't see who mentioned that one, but that's another one. So I'm going to stop babbling because I've been just babbling and throwing stuff out there. I see there's a question. Okay. Is there any interaction between lymph, lymphs and nerves? I often feel like I am experiencing lymph, lymphedema, but my therapist diagnoses it as nerve damage. Um, sorry. I, uh, is there any correlation when my nerves are acting up my axilla and all the way through my arm and hand? Yeah, so potentially, yes. So I, what I see a lot of is because if you have swelling in your axilla here, you've got all these nerves that run through here down all the way to your fingers. And if you've got any swelling pushing on those nerves, you're likely to have numbness, tingling, pain down to your hand. So yes, <laughs> likely a correlation. So if you have any, if it's swelling pushing there, then then managing that swelling would potentially hopefully help that, that nerve issue. But then, um, the other thing is sometimes radiation can cause some brachial plexus damage. And so then you've got nerve pain with that too. And so I don't, not, I'm not knowing specifically what your situation looks like. I'm not sure how to answer that other than it could. Yeah, yes. that was me. It's Susan here. Hi. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. Because I guess that was going to be a follow-up question was whether if 
you did some of these lymphedema exercises, therapies, or things that can keep the swelling down if it then will have a domino effect on relieving some of the nerve pain. And like you're saying is you just got to kind of try things and see what's happening, see if it works or not, and just keep talking about it between your doctor and the therapist. Yes. Yeah. You know, I think no harm can ever come from doing self-massage for your, well, not, not no harm, but if you're feeling swelling and you want to do some self-massage, as long as you, so now I have to back up a little bit. If you have active cancer that's not being treated, I don't want you to do self-massage. There's a lot of conflicting research on that. So I would just put that out there. But um, if you have you, you know, your post treatment and you're having, you think that you might have some swelling, do some self massage. And if you feel a difference, then you'll know it, it, it'd be a good sign that potentially you had some lymph, lymphatic buildup there that needed to, okay. to, okay. to move. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mary. Sure. I, sometimes I have people tell me they can feel the lymph moving and most people can't. So I think that's, um, I, I always feel like, you know, I'm doing this like light touch massage and, you know, opening pathways. And then, you know, <clears throat> it, it, there's this, is it helping? So I'm always, I always feel a little validated when one in 20 people says, I can feel it moving. I'm like, okay, but this, this, <laughs> this is proof to me that it really, it really does help. But if you n maybe don't feel it moving, but, but notice later, ah, huh, I can put my arm down better or my arm is less heavy or I can, I can open my arm now more better Then then you'll know that then that that was a potentially helpful massage and you might want to keep doing it. Um, someone, oh, Annie, do water, do water pills help? No, because this isn't, um, it's a different type of swelling. So yeah, that's a, and that's a good question. A lot of people ask that. Um, if you've got swelling like in your legs, if it's kind of cardiac related, then water, I'll, I'll do some water pills for that kind of thing. But for lymphedema, water pills won't really help typically. Not, okay. they, they prescribe not across the board, but typically. Prescribe me water pills during chemo, and I don't really remember why, but I have a bunch of them left, and I just was just curious. So thank you. Typically not with lymphedema, but you know during the chemo, I, that they probably had a, a a good reason for that one. Yeah, <laughs> so. I don't even remember, but okay, thank you. Sure. So all right, more questions. I have another question, Mary. Yeah, um, I travel for work. Um, I've had a compression sleeve made. And so oh, September, good. I took my first work trip in like a year and a half and did fine. And then I've flown four times since and I wore the compression sleeve. But my fear is, you know, I'll travel for work and I'll be in another state and I'll develop lymphedema. I mean, what what do I do or what could I do if that happened? That's a it's a really good question. So do you, you said you do have a sleeve that you, that you have and you haven't had to wear it on a, on, do you wear it when you fly? Or? I do just okay. for precaution. I've been wearing it every time I fly. Okay. Do you move and get up and take movement breaks on the plane? I actually move my arm like this kind of around, good. lift it up just because I'm awesome. just freaked out. By it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know that's, I, that would be the one thing is when you're flying, if you're wearing it, make sure you do those kind of range of motion exercises. You do take movement breaks as much as they allow you to walk. Yeah. Drink lots of water. Don't drink alcohol when you're flying. Um, but then if you were to say land in, in Minnesota and find that suddenly you had some swelling, I would say right away to start doing some manual lymph drainage. So the, 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 um, we can go through that if anyone wants to go through the steps of how to do that, or you can also look at the video that will walk you through it. I would keep that little link for that video handy because I think that's a really good one to just have on hand for anyone because you could just find yourself anywhere. Any one of us can find ourselves, you know, suddenly, wow, I've just, I swelled up. So um, it's, that would be your first step to do that. And then call your provider as soon as you get back, call your doctor. And Perfect. Thank you so much. Sure. Are there foods that or nutrients that impact or can keep your lymph nodes healthy? Um, so yeah, that's a really good question. And um, that one, the, the naturopath, that's, there's a link on there. One of the things that she talked about in this webinar I did with her was like ginger, 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 like ginger tea. So there's not a lot of evidence based research on it, but she, there was enough that she really felt like it was important. Um, I don't think that it, 
could hurt to drink a lot of ginger tea <laughs> necessarily, but um, that that is the big. The, the other thing, kind of nutritionally, is to avoid salt, and I think we all should probably do that anyway. If there's any food that can increase the swelling, it, it's salt. Um, and then really kind of as much as possible sticking to a kind of a whole food, clean eating diet. Uh, so preservatives are can cause global inflammation in our body, not just the lymph system, but our whole body. So avoiding the prepared stuff as much as possible and eating lots of fruits and veggies and protein and lots of water, limiting the, you know, the caffeine and, and sodium drinks and stuff like that. But I would look at look at that, her website because she's got some good information on there. I, I think she talked about a lot of cruciferous vegetables to increase in, you know, the cauliflower and the broccoli and um, all the stuff that we all know we should. Oh, nutrition. Right. <laughs> and now I want a big salty margarita, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> that actually sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> what if I put some broccoli in it? <laughs> I think that's, that's a great hard. idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a bite of broccoli and a sip of your margarita. You could just go back and forth. There you go. <laughs> I could dip one in the, in it. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> what else? Does anyone want to go through kind of how to do self lymph drainage or is that something? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to kind of tilt this because the first way place to start is kind of some belly work. So your your belly is kind of like this kind of grand central station almost for all of your lymphatic pathways. So you're going to start with two hands. If you go kind of say above, actually, let's start, start on the left side, above your left pelvic bone, you're just going to kind of push in and move that fluid that may be there towards your belly button. So you're pushing towards the middle. So we'll do each one a couple times. Ideally, you should do it like five to seven times. So we're gonna push through there, then kind of move to the middle. Is that five to seven times a day or five to seven no. times? When you're doing this whole system, so five to seven times like this, okay. right? All right? Yeah, Thanks. sorry, that's a good question. <laughs> then you're gonna to come to the middle, do it again. You're pushing up towards the belly button. I don't know if this is how this is kind of looking here. So pushing up towards the belly button. And then you would go to the other side, pushing towards, kind of moving this whole, for me, it's just a roll of fat, moving this roll of fat towards my belly button. You're just moving that way. And then you're gonna go kind of under the rib cage and same thing, directing it towards the middle. I'm underneath again. And then the other side underneath the left rib cage. So you're basically going kind of like, left hip bone, middle, right hip bone, right rib cage, middle, left rib cage, all directing it towards the belly. And then you would do five to seven really big breaths. So I want you to put your hands on your belly and take a big breath in, but make your, your belly rise with your breath. So we tend to be shallow chest breathers. We wanna bring all our air to the belly. So you're gonna breathe in. And then as you blow out, push down. And then you're going to move your hands to your left, take a big breath in and push down. And you're going to go again to the middle and push down and the right. And one more to the middle. All right. So you kind of prepare the belly and the belly is really important to prepare because that's, again, everything's going to kind of move down there and it's going to recirculate through your body. You're going to then come to your neck and I want you to do, you would do five to seven of these rolls. We'll just do a few of those. And then you're going to do neck turns on the side. So you've got these lymph nodes here, the supraclavicular lymph nodes, and then you've got these cervical lymph nodes. So we're really basically stretching the skin to try to stimulate those lymph nodes. And then in addition to that, what I would do is take some fingers and feel your collarbone, reach behind it and do some circles towards your neck. Again, five to seven, seven to 10 even. If you feel 
sometimes you may feel one side is a little puffier than the other, which tells me that you've got a little congestion, a little backup of fluid, because you've got your thoracic duct here and your right lymphatic duct here, where the which pulls that fluid, your fluid goes there and it goes back into the circulatory system through those big pipes, they're like big drainage pipes there. So if they're a little swollen, you wanna clear them off. And then you would come to your neck and do these circles towards the back. And this just feels relaxing. Again, five to seven times. Now, if, you're, if your surgery was on your left, you want to kind of get this fluid, anything that's over here, to a healthy area. So we're going to direct it towards your right armpit or your left groin, the inguinal nodes down there. So you have to prepare those areas. So we're going to pretend the injury was here. So we're going to go to our right armpit and do some circles and pull it towards the middle. Five to seven, once again, right? There's your magic number, but do as many as you feel like you need to do. You can just take your time. I'm rushing through it, but I want you to, when you do this, to really go every, do everything slowly, take your time. Then you're gonna kind of clear out this breast area. So I, I always tell people, think about if you have a flooded house, you've got, you know, it's flooded in the living room and then it's flooded in the bedrooms and it's flooded all the way in the attic. You can't get attic fluid out until you clear out your first and second floors. So this is one of your rooms, one of your floors. So you're gonna, any fluid that's stagnant here, you're gonna clear it out, get it kind of cleared in the right breast area towards the axilla and then up this way towards the axilla. And then you wanna open the, the gate basically. So right here in your sternum, you're gonna to go towards, <laughs> towards your right side. And then you're gonna pull it from your left breast towards the right side. You're doing these kind of like rainbow strokes, like up and down, you stretch it and release it and stretch it and release it all the way towards that side that wasn't affected. Five to seven times, right? <laughs> Again. So then you're going to come to your left inguinal nose. So if, if this was the side that was evolved, right? So we're going to come down to the groin where your leg meets your hip. And you're going to do some circles right in here up towards your belly kind of alerting those lymph nodes basically five to seven or so and then we have to again clear remember we've got one of our floors is, is still flooded so here's our floor that's flooded we have to clear it out before we can move the fluid from their left side so doing these circular strokes towards the hip and I promise if you look at that video, it's she goes through it so nice and carefully and slowly, it'll make a lot more sense. But this will kind of get you started and it'll make more sense now that you've seen it once. <laughs> and once you've gone from like rib cage down, then you're gonna go all the way from your armpit, pulling it down. And then you just, again, these circles, pulling, stretching your skin down towards your groin. So you're really clearing out the path so that anything in your arm or anything in your breast has a, has a place to go towards your groin or towards your right side. So once you've done you know, a good job of clearing towards the right, clearing down towards your hip, then you would address your arm and you're gonna do again those circle strokes pulling up towards your armpit. So think about this fluid has to have somewhere to go. You don't have thing, uh, holes in your fingertips. So never push down. If you push down, it's, it has nowhere to go, it'll get stuck. So you have to pull it on up. Pull there. And every now and then, I want you to kind of follow it towards the right or follow it down towards the left. And then you can go kind of spend some time right at the elbow. So you've got lymph nodes in your elbow. You want to get those kind of alerted so they can push that fluid. And then you would do the forearm and pulling it on up. I put the forearm, I kind of do up like a Pac-Man pump. So you're going to kind of pump it on up there. And again, this is really slow. I'm not doing it justice just in the interest of time, but it's a nice, slow, careful 
steady massage. Think of it as just good time for self-care for yourself. Probably all really busy working family people and this is just, this is a time for you. Take that time to just take care of yourself. Okay, and then the final step would be your, your hand. So you can do these stretching motions on the back of your hand like this a few times. Sometimes your hand will be really puffy and you can't see, say you can't see your, your knuckles. A few circles like this and you'll start to see that skin will stretch. And then you'd follow it up and over or up and then down. And then you would do each individual finger even. So if you're having swelling in your fingers, here you go, each little finger. Pretend you're putting on a really tight glove and you're moving any fluid. And the final thing with that is once you've done that whole drainage and you really feel like you've moved anything that's kind of stagnant in there, it's really important to, to move then, right? So do some more shoulder rolls, do some up and down with your arms, do some bending with your, ex your elbows at the wrists, do lots of movement to get that fluid going even faster with your um, muscle contractions. Because that's, that's going to be your best friend is movement and, and muscle movement. Because that's what gets that fluid going. That was a, the quick and dirty. <laughs> the quick and dirty version. It, it is, I, I really do like that video on Compression Guru because it, she, I, and I love that they made it accessible during COVID because it was a $30 video and not a lot of people have the, um, you know, the cancer treatment is expensive. So not a lot of people have extra funding to be buying videos. And it's just, it's a wonderful video. Very, very well done. I hope that they keep it accessible for a while. But you, if you access it, you can download it. So that was really fast. What, 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 <laughs> what questions do people have? That was very helpful. Thank you. Sure. And don't do it that fast when you do it on yourself at home. <laughs> Normally. Okay. I know. And I, I tell people if they do have active lymphedema to do it at least twice a day. So in the morning when you wake up, in the, in the evening before you go to bed, you've got a time in the daytime, do it another time. Again, it's a time consuming thing, but remember that you are important and special and make time for yourself. Thank you. I've been babbling a lot. <laughs> no, you've been great, Mary. What other questions do people have? I don't have a, a question, Mary, um, but for you in the group, um, my doctor prescribed a compression top for me. And um, I met Loveless, and apparently they have a partnership with Active Life Solutions. Mm -hmm. And Active Life Solutions takes insurance. So yes. if your surgeon prescribes a compression top, your insurance may cover it. Awesome. If anybody wants me to leave that, I can put it in the chat, but it's called Active Life Solutions. And my insurance covers two tops every six months. Oh, that's great. That you know, that's a battle. So some insurance, most insurance, most of commercial insurance will cover those garments, the sleeves, the the tanks, things like that. Medicare does not. So if I have patients with Medicare, that's usually an out of pocket expense, which is really tough. Medicaid and other commercial insurances cover them typically. Um, sometimes there's a copay, but um, I'm I'm excited for you that you got two um, two every six months. That's wonderful. <laughs> Seems like it's harder and harder to get this stuff covered. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, and it shouldn't. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to pay this. I, I, I you know, in, in my, in my special place in my head, everyone gets the, the the things that they need covered by insurance. And but I live in a happy place in my head. <laughs> Sometimes coming out to reality is tough. So I'm glad yours were covered, and I hope everybody's is. And active oh, license is great because they'll measure them. They'll measure for you and get you. And yes. They, they will, yeah. They measure custom. They custom. Good. Oh, it's good. not really custom design, but they'll me take your measurements and then get you the right brand, you know, the brand yes. of compression mm -hmm. top that will be the best fit uh, for you. And 
Yeah, because not everyone not not everyone fits the same type, right? I mean, there are different manufacturers, and everyone's bodies were all different. We're all different size bodies, so that's what yeah, I, I like. Have, yeah. Oh yeah. Compression tops with sleeves, compression tops without sleeves, compression tops that go down over your stomach, others that are you know end at your you know just below the breast. There's all kinds. Yeah, yeah. It's um. There, there are so many options out there and they are pricey. So insurance, it's great that the insurance is covering them. I, I do tell people like if, if their insurance isn't gonna cover them, you can go to say Target or Walmart or Marshalls or those places and get like the body shapers. And they're not quite as, they're not medical garments, but they're, and they're not quite as effective if you really need a lot of compression, but they're better than having no compression if you have any, even if you're starting to feel beginning swelling where you're not quite ready to, make the plunge into something medical. Um, there, you know, the, the knockoffs on Spanx. Spanx are, I, I'm not a fan of Spanx because they're hard to put on, but they, they like the, the less less aggressive versions of Spanx, the body shapers, those kind of things are helpful. Yeah, good point. People have other questions. I apologize again for my kind of lack of organization here. There's a lot to say. <laughs> and I do feel passionately that people need to know this stuff. And, and do people, I, I, are people hopefully if you're having issues, I'm hoping that you're set up with Loveless or Press or, or UNM or wherever, somewhere with a therapist, if you're needing it. Good. There, there yeah. are not enough therapists out there, but there are, we've got, a, we've got a good number in town. So that would be my big thing is talk to your provider and get, get seen if, if you're not already. I just appreciate you taking time to share it with us because it seems to me the more I read and learn and talk to breast cancer survivors about it, it's something not to take lightly because it can happen at any time for the rest of your whole freaking life. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the stinky thing about it, right? Is it's kind of like lifelong management and yeah. it can happen at any time. And then once it does happen, you kind of have to be monitoring it for ever. It's not really... I, there are new, new, exciting surgeries, but there, you know, we have very few surgeons in the states that do these surgeries, and they're not appropriate for everyone. So, really, it's that that self management is so important forever. But it's manageable, and that's the key. Yeah. So my 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 big thing is stay active and enjoy your life. That's. Exactly. That's moving what I take away too. <laughs> eat, <laughs> keep moving, eat right. Yep. Yeah. Um, I can, if anyone, I, I know you guys, it sounds like people are working with therapists and so you've got people to talk to, but I can put my, my email on here. If anyone has any questions, I'm happy to, um, let me just put this on here right now. Um, or if, you know, if I babbled a lot and something didn't make sense, like, please email me and just ask, cause I'm happy to answer questions. And I always tell people if I, if you, if you email me and I don't get right back to you, please email again. Cause I, I, you know, I'm, you know, squirrel all the time. I get distracted very easily. So <laughs> I always have the best intentions, but I sometimes need someone to nag me a little bit. I, 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 I think this might be a dumb question, but I'm There's no dumb questions. <laughs> yeah, no. this one probably is. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, uh, do, you, does, if you wear like compression sleeve or uh, um, with, without having it i mean does it help prevent or is it just you know no matter what it's coming for you if it's if it's coming for you i mean there's that 
other than like doing the, you know, eating right and exercising and doing all that good stuff? That's a really good question. And I, at this class that I was reviewing again, she, the, but the big thing was there's not good evidence that prevention by wearing a sleeve is necessary. So sometimes people will prescribe it like, and it's, it's really your provider specific because a lot of providers will say, I really want you to wear that. And then, then please do. If they tell you they want you to wear that, then please do. But um, there's not, what from what I was reading in this and hearing in this class is there's not a lot of great evidence that it's it will prevent. Okay. And, and then if, you, if it's an uncomfortable garment for you and no one's told you that you really need to, um, then, yeah. then it, it's very personal very, very personal, honestly. Yeah. It just, yeah, I, I think that's the, the hardest thing for me to just comprehend is, is um, that there's really, you know, nothing that I can do um, other than, again, eating right and exercising and just, you know, waiting for it. So I guess well, that's the most frustrating thing for me, I guess. To... Well, and, and don't just wait for it. So that's my thing right. too, is I worry about people like, because it is very stressful to think, oh my gosh, on top of all this, now I could get this and right. not necessarily. So really yeah. just, you know, I just try to put it on a back burner and, you know, try to, you know, make good choices for most of the things that you do, but don't let it consume you because you know, it, it, it's, and if, and if it happens, it's, it's manageable. And that's the other thing. Please remember yeah, that. If yeah. it happens, it's I guess, manageable. I guess that's the big, the big uh, key there that it is manageable. So, okay. All right. Don't, don't let it stress you out. That's why, you know, I was, I always, I'm always afraid to say all these precautions because I don't want people to be worried and that kind of like, well, you might get it, you might not. It feels so fatalist and I, I hate that, but I also say that because I don't want people to think they're destined to if they have a large number of nodes removed and they're, they're no, you know, there's no promise that you won't if you don't have a lot of nodes removed. Right. And it wasn't a stupid question, so please remember that. There's no stupid question. <laughs> And no one, no one talks about lymph, the whole lymph system in school. Most of us don't talk about it in school. I didn't learn anything about it in high school or college. I'm in grad school, but they don't, they touch on it. They don't talk about it a lot. So no stupid questions. There are none. Um, is the best thing, I mean, once you, uh, so, you know, let's say you just notice some swelling um, and then, uh, is the, the best thing to, um, just, you know, go and notify, uh, you know, your provider right away when you notice, if you notice something like that, or, um, like I, I'm pretty regular with just, uh, uh, you know, massage, like I'll just get regular massage once a week. And oh, my, my massage therapist kind of, you know, is very aware and kind of, you know, is, you know, you know, looking out, I guess, for, for swelling and, and that kind of thing. But, um, but I, but I'm, I, I, I'm wondering too, if, if, if it, if it makes sense to, you know, go to like the, a special, you know, much a massage the therapist that like includes dry brushing or, you know, something like that. You know, I think it's worth seeing, you know, a lot of massage therapists might not be um, like certified lymphedema therapists, but a lot, most yeah. massage therapists have, lymph have lymphedema understanding. And so yeah. it's worth asking the massage therapist that you go to, are you aware of the lymphatic system? Just so she knows, or she, or he knows kind of, to what to be aware of in your particular yeah. case but i would say if you notice some swelling you know if you notice any change you definitely contact your surgeon or your oncologist or your you know whoever your provider is because i mean even if they put in a referral for you somewhere and by the time you you know you got something scheduled you didn't have any swelling at least you've got kind of it's the process started right yeah okay yeah 
Hmm. You know, I did want to say that, you know, I, my therapist or my um, surgeon kept saying, focusing on the arm, you know, make sure your arm's okay. So I was completely obsessed with my arm and come to find out I did have it and I do have it in the trunk. So it's oh. all down here, all in my breast and all under my breast. And it felt, and I'm explaining this so people can just be aware, but it was felt very spongy and kind of thick. And it was just really odd. So um, all of this is manageable, Sean, too, if this is to happen. Like, you know, I went to a lymphedema specialist and I was, I wear the compression bra all the time. It's a longer one that kind of goes down my torso. So I just felt like so much emphasis was on the arm and keeping that. Right. Focus when in actuality, it was all in my trunk, which you don't hear very much about. So I just wanted people to be aware to keep an eye on the trunk area too. That's but, yeah, that's very good. But you, but you, 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 you felt it, right? You said, Oh, this, this, this feels weird. Right. Or. Yeah, I did, but I actually thought it was from the radiation at first. And so I thought, Oh, it's from the radiation. But then once I eventually got in to see the surgeon, because I was concerned thinking it was the radiation induced fibrosis, it was that and also the lymphedema in my trunk, which I didn't know you could get in your trunk until it was explained to me. So right, right. Yeah. 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 But all the things work, all the exercise, the massage, the compression, it all works and is manageable. It just is, it's just a bummer that we have to kind of be aware of it our whole life, I guess. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 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 I'm glad I'm glad you were able to tell that difference too, because that is that it's it's you're right. We are here a lot, you know, look up for that arm because that's what we're kind of we, we talk about most and that's this area kind of sneaks up on you too. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you noticed that. Mm -hmm. I what does um what does that when you when you describe the heaviness what does that does anybody know what that feels like I thought I I have my arms always not always but there are times that they just feel heavy um and I always thought that that was from like from radiation some sort of like fatigue thing um but they but yeah i mean they they do they i don't have any swelling or anything like that but they 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 always feel where they have felt weird since um since i guess since radiation really and i have never known and no one really seems to know what that is from <laughs> i guess so sean my most of the filling on my left side i mean they took like 14 lymph nodes so my arm always has felt since last october like just weird i've gotten so used to it though so it just doesn't feel weird anymore but I can tell you when I started to have something going on with the left side this summer it was like nerve nervy mm -hmm. and they said that like like Mary mentioned it's all part of that lymphatic system something irritated it my nerves just started acting up it was from like my shoulder all the way down to my wrist but I put that compression sleeve on and that helped and then I, I was doing PT at the time and they massaged it so yeah. well so like all of that helped and like the nerve stuff went away so i think if you have any fear just get like some of the compression stuff and just have on hand and the videos and stuff but yeah i was so yeah. afraid to fly because i was like i'm gonna get lymphedema that's oh. right it's gonna happen. but i mean i just did it i you know had my compression sleeve on and i was like massaging my arm throughout the plane <laughs> the flights and stuff and i've flown four or five times now and I felt okay so yeah it's yeah. just the fear yeah no i i'm still in the terrified to fly i'll drive oh. cross country before i <laughs> yeah but that feeling right always now. the my arm just 
I mean, now that you mention it, I'm kind of thinking like, yeah, you know, it feels kind of just, it's just not, it will never feel normal just because of everything that was done to it. But mm. yeah, I have that feeling too. Mm. I'm glad you're able to describe what that feels like. Cause that's, you know, I, I can tell you what I read in the books, but personal experience it's, explaining what that feels yeah, like. Is. It's the oddest. It's like my elbow almost always feels like maybe it's a sleep or something. And then it's not like pins and needles though, but it's, yeah. like, it's just a weird, yeah. It's just weird to try to describe. Yeah. I, I, I don't have any joint pain or, um, but from my elbow, um, you know, to my, to my fingers, they, they feel sometimes like, like, like weight, like dead weight. Um, and I, yeah, and I have never really understood what that is. Mm. Well, the other thing you could do is measure. So I use, you know, do a circumfer circumferential measurement. So take a little tape measure and, yeah. you know, a fabric one and measure, compare both sides. When I measure people, I'd go every four centimeters up and that's tedious, but you can do like wrist okay. of your arm and elbow, middle upper arm and all the way up on um, each arm and kind of compare to. And then you also have a, where are you now? And if at six months you were like, it feels different, measure it again and you can see. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a smart idea. Yeah. We got to have a baseline. Okay. Yeah. That's smart. Yep. Okay. Great. But don't be scared of it. So that's this thing too. Like, it, you know, <laughs> no, it's just it's annoying. Worries. It's just annoying. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, 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 like really good information, really helpful. No one talked about it uh, really with me during or, you know, before surgery or after surgery, really. So it was, it's always been something that's, you know, that, I, I mean, I've heard the ladies talk about it a little bit, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's enough to know I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Good information. Yeah. Just be aware, but enjoy every daily task. Just enjoy things. Oh, Mary, did you have a brand for those uh, pajamas, the cooling pajamas? Oh, so you know what it was? It was a nighttime um, compression sleeve. So oh. um, Medi, M-E-D-I. They make so if you need a compression sleeve at night, theirs is oh, this. Yeah, and I don't, I can't remember what it's called. I I left on Friday and I haven't, I didn't work today at the at the hospital, so I've left the stuff that I would have had to show. Um, it's there. It's like Climacool or Cools or something like that. But if you went on the Medi website, they've got like this is their newest nighttime garment is designed to be cooling. Oh, gotcha. Makes yeah. sense. Thank you. Sure smart of them because who wants to put on a big heavy sleeve when you're having hot flashes <laughs> and, and in Albuquerque when it's 100 degrees at night <laughs> so, I mean, with a swamp cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Do I all want to get to your dinners? Thank you, Mary. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for listening to my babble. Again, I apologize. I'm a little flustered. I, I was telling Allison, my kids all are great presenters and I, you know, worked my hardest as a shy introvert in school to avoid any kind of time talking in front of people. So, <laughs> so thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> Mary, it was amazing. Truly, thank you for sharing your time and talents with us this evening. Oh, of course. I just, you know, I, I appreciate all of you because you are all tr truly, I mean, that your pink warrior house really, truly you're all warriors. So keep up the, keep up your strength and fight. Thanks, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank, Thank you, guys. Mary. Thank you so much. You. Take care. Thank and you. I mean it, you know, email any questions if you have them. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thanks again, Thank Mary. You. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.